All right. So, yeah, we're going to hold the mics. We've got a few minutes here, but cool. media day. Let's go. What's yeah. your favorite part about media day? Oh, the end. <laughs> <laughs> the end. What's it like compared to, like, Stanford's? Uh, a lot shorter. Like, Stanford, we had a couple stations, like, um, probably, like, what they had in the court. Uh, yeah. What they have on the court, just, like, movements and stuff like that, and then that's it, really. So, there's a lot more of the NBA uh, media day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get pictures taken from everybody and deal yeah. with people like us and all types of different uh, face expressions and all that stuff. Yeah, so. right. yeah. The screaming, the puppy. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, what was the best moment of your rookie year, looking back? Uh, my, the best moment of my rookie year was scoring my first point um, mm-hmm. on Christmas Day. I was a big fan of the Lakers growing up, so to do it at the Staples Center on you know Christmas Day huge. Um, was huge for me, and so all my, all my family got to see it on, on television. So that was, that was my favorite part. That's awesome. for sure. You obviously missed a good chunk yep. of the season last year. If that's something you can speak on, if you can't, it's no big deal. Or can you shine light a little bit on that? Uh, yeah, so um, I was dealing with some mental health stuff that mm. uh, kind of runs in my family. Um, and I wasn't really uh, aware of that it was creeping up on me. Um, it kind of hit me pretty serious. So uh, I had to take care of that and figure out ways to, you know, make myself better in that area. Yeah. Um, but it, it was great because, uh, you know, the Cuban and, um, you know, the old front office that was here, they were so supportive. And even the Mavs fans were so supportive, even though uh, most people didn't know what was going on. Um, you know, so it made a lot easier for me what what would you tell somebody that's maybe in the maybe in a similar spot I, I know for me when I first went to counseling the hardest part for me was walking in the door for the first time yeah it's like if somebody is struggling at home and they're watching this listening to this what would you say the first step to them would be that it's not just you um for the longest time I grew up around uh even my family and friends that we just didn't share our emotions. Mm. Um, and I, I had emotions uh, in high school that I just kind of pushed off to the side because, you know, I was, I was a man, I was a boy, you know. Um, and so now that I see that, I, saw, I just saw a commercial the other day about uh, NFL players talking about how they were going through some serious mental health stuff and that it mm. took a while for them to, you know, be able to open up and that um, I feel like a lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot, but I feel like there's a good um, number of people out there that are, are going through the same thing as a male or even a female, but just sp- specifically a male um, and that, you know, you're not, you're not in this alone and that yeah. it's okay to just, you know, reach out and, um, you know, you're doing it to, to better yourself, you know? Yeah. And so I would just say that, you know, don't be afraid cause it's not just you. Yeah. So uh, once I got over that, it was a lot easier for me. Mm. After talking to probably all your teammates and other players across the league, what's what was different about you, your rookie year than what other players have said their rookie year was like? Because your rookie year was insanely different. Though. Yeah, uh, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Pretty much every every so often the players just be like, yeah, you're not really experiencing a real season and stuff like that. It was just from like not being able to go to team dinners. Like we couldn't even have meals together. We couldn't hang out together. We weren't even sitting next to each other on the bench really. We were, you know, yeah. six feet apart. Yeah. Um, you know, just so many things where you couldn't, like, uh, build chemistry early on. Uh, and it kind of showed last year we got off to a slow start, and a lot of our teammates were like, you know, we got to do some team bonding and stuff like that, and we just couldn't, you know. So it was it was tough in that aspect. They do Zoom party. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know when you first, when we talked on the phone after you got drafted, we talked about you hearing the critics, you know, when you first – declare for the draft and so when you hear even now when you hear someone say says you know Tyrell Terry Ty Terry's too small yeah what do you think I mean I at this point I don't really pay mind to it um you know I, people were saying the same thing in high school people were saying the same thing at Stanford so the same thing when I declared like <laughs> it's just you know I go out there like for summer league for instance you know if if I was 185 pounds and I scored 22 points I feel like the narrative would be a lot different, mm. but because I'm, you know, 165 around that area, you know, like it's like, oh, he scored that, but he's still too small. You know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. uh, it's kind of just one of the thing, one of those things where I just can't pay attention to it anymore. Yeah. What would you consider a successful season for you, the Mavericks, collectively? Uh, I think for me personally, um, just you know, being the best version of myself, you know, I have, um, you know, some time here left with the Mavs. And so uh, by, the, by the time, you know, my, my contract's up and it's time to, uh, you know, either renew it or, or move on, I want to be the best version of myself for the Mavericks to make that decision. So um, just making strides to being the best version of myself. And for the Mavs, you know, I think we have so much talent here that, you know, I don't know why, you know, making the finals wouldn't be our, our final destination. Yeah. So when you look at Mavs history up until this point, if I said, hey, Tyrell, what would be the 
all-time Mavs starting five. Oh boy, what would you say? <laughs> uh, okay, I don't really, I don't honestly don't know too much history about the Mavs, yeah, yeah. like players. So um, there's a couple you can just knock off, though. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Jason Kidd at the one, but I'm gonna put Luca with him. Yeah, putting so. your coach. One is pretty yeah. uh, smart move. Smart, smart move. So, but, so we're doing like a lineup, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we'll just put Luca at the at the two, quote unquote yeah. two. Uh, man, three. There's a, there's maybe a guy in the front office. We okay, could go. Okay. We could go with Finn. Finley. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's do him. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Uh, four. We'll go Dirk. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Smart choice. And then I have to go Kristaps at the five. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. So, yeah. I like it. I like it. Let's sure. go. Uh, you want to do okay. some rapid fires? Let's do a couple rapid fire questions. Oh, let's right, go. So you're in hand-to-hand combat. You're fighting fist fights. Would you rather fight one Bobon-sized squirrel, so a giant squirrel, okay. or a hundred squirrel-sized Bobons? Whoa. <laughs> uh, one Bobon-sized squirrel. You think, this, okay. you think you'd be able to take the squirrel? You can help smart Yeah. It. I feel like any anything with a hundred... With a hundred, that's just rapid. Flight. It's just rapid, yeah. <laughs> Succession. Of one I feel like Toby would be too nice to like actually <laughs> damage to me, so I don't know. Maybe you could befriend the hundred Bobons. Yeah, hundred yeah. Bobons. Uh, what's the best thing and worst thing about being an NBA player? Um, I think the best thing is just being able to like be immersed around the best basketball players in the world on a, a day-to-day basis. You know, like coming in the practice facility and you know seeing Luca do what he do what he does on a daily basis. It's like it's incredible. Um, and I think the worst part. Um, I mean, I would say the travel, uh, yeah. you know, being on a plane so often, I think uh, it's not it's not too bad, but it gets, it gets tiring for sure. So, yeah. Which NBA team besides the Mavs are you most interested in, either watching or seeing what happens with them? Um, I would say I would say the Lakers. Um, you know, I was, I was a fan growing up, and I've always kind of been a LeBron fan. So, um, you know, I would say I watch out for them a little bit. Like, and, like, all the players. Were, like, yeah, and they're, they're, they're like trying to do something crazy with, you know, the Russell Westbrook and them. So it, it's pretty intriguing. It they is. have players, I think, that were in the NBA before, like, you were born, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's crazy. A lot of these people, like, when we were doing, uh, like, introductions today, some people have been with this organization longer than I've been alive. It's That's insane. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, okay, first celebrity crush. Selena Gomez. Okay. Yeah. Selena Gomez. That's a, that's a great one. That is going. Uh, ideal first date for you or for advice for somebody else. What do you think is the best version of a first date? Somebody that uh, you before you didn't. I mean, for me, like putt putt or bowling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Which me, one are you better at? Uh, I would say bowling. Yeah, pretty good at bowling, but. You know, I was just in high school like two and a half years ago, so <laughs> you know, putt putter bowling was kind of the go to. That was like, the spot. You yeah. know, six to ten dollars per person. It was, <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. All right, awesome. man, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate thank you so you, much, man. Good to see you.